So I've been developing games for literally over half my life, and today I want to go over some of the tools and applications that I use for game development. So the first one, what you're seeing in the background here, this is called Tile Setter. It basically helps with auto tiling. So if you don't know what auto tiling is, it's basically telling the game engine to automatically paint the edges of any sort of like terrain shape that you draw. So you do have to draw this really basic shape for whatever like terrain you're working with. And then from here, it's as easy as literally pasting this in, clicking on build borders, and then you can go through all these edges and select, hey, I want this edge to display this tile. I want this corner to display this top left corner. And then after you've gone through and assigned all the sources, it will basically build out these extra tiles, which usually these are just a pain to manually go in and draw. And sometimes you have to touch it up a bit, but generally it looks really good and you can literally just start painting with it uh, in the editor here. You can obviously export this uh, to your engine as well, but I start painting and you can see that it automatically draws the correct edges depending on the shape of my grass, which is just super handy. Like it probably took me, I don't know, 30 minutes to draw this base square and then literally like 30 seconds to generate the rest of the tiles. It's a super powerful program. So I would definitely check out Tile Setter. Now the next program is called Pixel Over. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know how much I love this program. But really all I want to show here is this is a 3D model and pixel over allows me to render it out into a more pixel art kind of style and rotate it any direction I want. So I can literally just render this sparkling out in this direction, this direction, and it's super easy for generating like multi-directional sprite sheets as I only need to animate the 3D model once and then I literally just render them out. So one of the most useful tools that I've come across and I would highly recommend it. Now the next program is slowly becoming like one of my top programs because it's just so powerful. It does have a really steep learning curve which I'm kind of trying to get over right now but it's called pixel composer and it's primarily for like visual effects and stuff uh, like that so i've opened a sample project here i did not make this but you can see on the left we have this super cool visual effect and basically the way this program works is you build everything with graph nodes as you can see in the editor here and you can basically make anything like i've seen people do animations in here even like auto tiling stuff you can render out 3d objects you can do 3d particle systems you can do regular particle systems so i absolutely love this program i feel like the learning curve is pretty steep but like there's not really a limit to what you can make in this application i feel so definitely a great program to add to your toolkit now we next have like four programs that i believe are made by the same developer and they handle really specific effects but i find myself using them for like game jams here and there the first one is called juice effects and what i typically do is like import an image and then it has a bunch of presets you can do so if you want like a wind effect you can do that if you want like a hit effect you can generate that in here teleport effect uh, electric effect. There's all sorts of really cool ones that you can work with. And then you can basically just come in here, edit all the parameters and really refine the effect to how you'd like it. Again, that's kind of all this program does. And similarly to that one is called smear effects, which is kind of the same idea, but it's more for handling like weapon trails and smears, I guess, on animations. So you can see like this uh, wooden board here. If I simulate this, it gets like that smear behind it. And this is a super niche tool, but I have used it a couple times. Um, kind of just a fun thing. This next one is a lot more useful and I might have to zoom in just because the UI is a bit small, but this one's called fluid effects and it's for fluid simulations like you can see in this viewport. So I feel like every game I create for like a game jam has this in it. And even my upcoming game Evor is using fluid effects for some of the animations. But whether you're making like smoke or like a blood effect or even like a magic effect, it's super easy to do in fluid effect and it allows you to just export it as a sprite sheet so that you don't have to hand animate fluid which is always super annoying to do now if you want something a bit more powerful that kind of has all of those previous tools wrapped into one there is sprite mancer which i haven't used this one as often just because i i kind of prefer pixel composer over this one but it's the same kind of idea where you can animate you can do visual effects particle systems uh, smear effects, basically all the stuff from the previous three programs that I explained, but it gives you a little more flexibility with those effects. Now on the more art side of things, we obviously have a sprite. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know what a sprite is, um, I don't know what to say, but it's a pixel art program that literally everyone uses and it does cost a bit of money. It's pretty cheap, but I believe you can compile it on your own for free. I didn't want to shout out a sprite here just because I'm sure everyone already knows about it. But what I did want to shout out is this program called Pixie Editor. And this is a free image editing program that I actually recently heard about. I believe it was Game From Scratch that mentioned it, but this is a super powerful program that I'm kind of trying to learn at the moment. 
and it supports procedural art, pixel art, image editing, uh, vector art, animations. So it's basically an image editor that is free with a ton of capabilities wrapped into one. And what I mainly like about this is the procedural art, pixel art, and vector art all in one program. Because previously I'd find myself switching between like Pixel Composer, Inkscape, and a sprite to do all these three things. So I'm still kind of trying to figure out like how powerful this is in those departments. But if you're looking for a free uh, pixel art or vector art program, then definitely check out Pixie Editor. Now for actually developing games like the engine I use, it should come as no surprise that I use Godot. This is obviously like primarily a Godot channel. So I'm assuming most of you use Godot as well. Now I've used Unreal, Unity, um, Game Maker, Stencil, a ton of engines in the past, and I've kind of landed on Godot. I feel like this is the most intuitive engine and obviously it's free and open source, so I love it. But Godot is the engine I'd recommend if you're getting into game development. And if you aren't using Godot and you've been doing game development, why not switch, right? Like, bro. What I really wanna focus on here is two things that you should be using with Godot that I find a lot of people aren't. And the first one is VS Code. The in-engine script editor always feels a bit clunky to me. So VS Code just allows me to add all sorts of fun plugins. I mean, the, the text highlighting is a different color. Some people hate that, but I personally just love spicing it up. I can switch the theme whenever. I have like cool images in the background. It just makes it feel a lot more personalized. And VS Code honestly integrates pretty seamlessly with Godot. If you don't know how to connect VS Code to Godot, I do have a video on that that you could check out really quick. It literally takes like five seconds and you can start coding in VS Code, which is super nice. Now, something that integrates really well with VS Code and something that you literally need to set up if you're doing any kind of game development, you need to set up version control. And I know a lot of people don't, but version control, if you don't know, it saves every version of your game. So you basically commit to what's called like a remote repository, which is essentially just onto like the GitHub website or the GitLab website. If you want to do the free and open source stuff, your entire project will then be backed up, which if you guys don't know, games are massive projects. So if you lose your work, Work, you're going to probably be devastated. So I would recommend just setting up version control if you haven't already. Um, Git is the most popular one to use. You obviously set up Git with typically GitHub. You can do GitLab, like I mentioned before, which a surprisingly large amount of people prefer, but GitHub has been around forever. There's a ton of tutorials on how to set up your repository, but either way, just set one up. You're gonna thank me later. Now next, we're gonna talk about audio stuff. I use Audacity for most of my audio editing, just for like quick sound effects and stuff and to normalize the audio. Now, if you want something a bit more advanced, I would recommend FL Studio. So FL Studio is, I believe, a couple hundred dollars. So it's obviously not as accessible, but it does have a lot more functionality because it is a professionally used audio interface. Now, I'm not a pro with FL Studio, but you can make like entire songs in FL Studio if you need music for your game, but even for or like basic sound effects. There are so many options for different effectors and effects you can add onto your sound effects to really spice them up. But if you're looking for something a bit more basic, then I would just stick with Audacity. But those are all the programs that I have for this video. There are a couple more niche ones. So if you guys wanna see a part two, I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, if you have any programs that you use that weren't shown in the video, be sure to leave them in the comments. I wanna shout out all the current channel supporters on Patreon and also YouTube members. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means a ton to me. And exclusive shout outs go to Randall Lassini and also Denied Works. If you do wanna support the channel, all the links are in the description. But thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye.